So let me, let me, let me give you – here, I'll just throw it out there. Aiden Hutchison, three-year starter productive. Trayvon Walker, better traits, higher ceiling, not as productive. Who do you take? Yeah, Colin, you know, I really can't answer that because I haven't studied the individuals. You know, for those high picks, I always wanted to sit down with them, know them personally. Uh, there's a lot of intangibles that go into it. Yeah, you, know, you really want to be able to predict, are they going to improve? Are they going to be good players down the road? Uh, that's why intelligence was like my number one criteria. Yeah. You know, looking at players, I wanted intelligence. I wanted a gym rat. I wanted a playmaker. You know, I wanted somebody with speed and quickness, and I wanted somebody with character because you can't win championships with bums. <laughs> uh, but I had to look at those intangibles before I made it a decision on a high pick. Now everybody's saying, Jimmy, that's oh, a bad draft. And Joy keeps saying, if we had four good quarterbacks, we wouldn't be talking about what a bad draft it is. <laughs> I mean, your takeaway on this kind of like it's a bad draft narrative. Hey, it's a bad draft if you don't draft the right guys. If you draft <laughs> the right guys, it's a great draft. Right. <laughs> Did you ever have a draft? I mean, you had multiple drafts. Do you know when you make a draft pick? Do you know instantly in camp? Uh, I don't know if he's going to work. I, I had one. I mean, obviously, you don't hit on every one of them. Uh, but I always try to cut my losses uh, before I waited too long. I, I, obviously, I wanted to give the player a chance. I know I had a second rounder down uh, with Miami that uh, I cut, you know, right after training camp because I saw that he wasn't going to play. Uh, but, you know, I had a fifth rounder that same year, Zach Thomas, that should yeah. be going into the Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, and so you're not going to hit on every one of them. Uh, but uh, you try to hit on more than what you miss. So, you know, it's funny what's happening to the league. Uh, both the Bengals and Rams had very soft linebacking cores. Bengals didn't even have a good old line, which they have addressed. You know, it used to be you get a quarterback, you protect your quarterback. You know, that was number one. The game's kind of changing. A lot of perimeter players now are making quarterback money. You look at the Dallas Cowboys right now, and I've said Lyle Collins is gone, and Tyron Smith's got about a year or two left. I think they have to attack that offensive line very quickly. And then I think, Jimmy, well, they let Amari Cooper go. And I don't know if Michael Gallup's going to be great off that ACL. Maybe they should do Cincinnati and just go get wide receivers. Dallas, what are your guess on what Dallas does? Well, I, I think offensive line, you know, that's been a problem for them the last couple of years because Smith has been injured. You know, they lost Collins, like you say. They lost the offensive guard. So they've got to shore up that offensive line. They've got plenty of receivers, plus – you can get receivers in the later rounds. Uh, even like we talk about the Green Bay Packers needing receivers, you know, Devontae Adams was a second round pick. Uh, and so, you know, I think the offensive line is the critical area right now. And, and plus there's some great offensive linemen that are going to be picked yeah. up in the, in the first round. By the way, this Alabama, I'm going to show you the Evan Neal from Alabama. Here's what worries me is that you know, he started for Saban for three years. And so he's good, right? We know that. And it's the SEC, but boy, Jimmy, he is big, and he doesn't – like, if you fool him, he doesn't move his feet very well for the second-tier block. Does that concern you at all? Well, yeah, it concerns me a little bit, but he moves his feet pretty well when he jumps up on that uh, that box <laughs> <laughs> for a 350-pounder. Uh, but, yeah, I, again, I got to look at the intangibles, uh, Colin, because you, you got to see, is a guy going to get better? You know, is he going to improve? Um, obviously at Alabama, he's getting as fine a coaching as there is anywhere in the country. Uh, some of the smaller schools, I took Eric Williams from central state of Ohio in the third round, he ended up would have been a hall of famer had he not had a car wreck. So, uh, you got to look and see if they're going to improve and, and how much they're going to improve. Um, you know, there's always the argument need. I always make the joke that if my wife sent me to the store to buy milk and bread and I came back with a rake and I said, but I got great value on it. Boy, I got that rake for half off. She'd say, well, we already have a rake. You didn't get me milk and bread. And so I always say, you know, you can tell me the, you can tell me value. And then I think if I need a corner and I don't see one for the next 60 picks, except one that I may have to reach a little on, how do you value that? Well, how do you fall on that? It, this, this goes right back to when I first went to Dallas, you know, the, the saying was, take the best player available. 
And I said, well, what if I don't like the best player available? <laughs> you know, I'm going to move around. And so, that, you know, that's how the trade chart came about because I wanted to trade. We made 51 trades in five years. And back then there was no fantasy football. Nobody traded. And that's why I needed the chart to help me to where I could make a decision in a, a few minutes. You know, as far as, you know, the bread and milk and whether or not, you know, you really didn't need it. Well, why didn't you go to another store uh, and get what you needed? <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's what I did. I'd move out of a pick to get a player that I needed that I liked that it was value was there. By the way, are you surprised people still use your uh, trade chart? <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's been 30 something years. And, you know, uh, I talked to Brett Veach uh, with uh, Kansas City here last year. He said, oh, I use your chart on uh, with the Brown ch- trade. And I talked to Ozzie Newsom a couple of years ago, and he said, I use your chart on the Peters trade. And, you know, it's amazing. Now the chart has been, you know, adjusted a little bit for the salary cap and, you know, a, a little bit for each particular team. But the chart is still used throughout the league. But, but I needed something like that because we were making so many trades. I, I had a... I, you know, I came up with the idea to do the chart, and I had a guy in the business office. Uh, I said, crunch the numbers and do all the trades for the last three or four years. You crunch the numbers, and I, and I want a chart with a line graph and a bar graph. And that's what helped me in, until, you know, Wanstead goes to Chicago and North Turner goes to Washington. They took the chart with them. So now everybody's <laughs> got the chart. That's funny. Hey, the Jets at number 10. You know, a lot of people. So, a lot of people think they'll get Drake London at USC. Other people think they'll trade it for Debo Samuel, but that's very expensive. Give me your kind of thoughts on if you interviewed Drake London and you liked him. Now, I don't think he's a star. I think he could be a great two. Maybe he's a star. I don't know. But Jimmy, what? what give me your thought process on your like. Okay, we interviewed Drake London. We do like him, but boy, Debo is in this league, and he is a handful, and I can use him in a lot of ways. Where do you land on that one? Oh, uh, please. If you can get Debo Samuel, yeah, you take him. You know, there's no guarantee even a 10th round pick is going to be, you know, a great player. Uh, you got a good feeling, but Samuel is a great player. Uh, I mean, really, Samuel's worth a lot more than the 10th pick. Uh, he is a game changer. Yeah. Okay. You wrote a book called Swagger. It's online now, Untold Stories from Jimmy's uh, Cowboys. Dolphins and Hurricanes. There, look at that right there, boy. That guy's serious right there. <laughs> Our, you know, it's funny. So, give me a story. Um, what is the one position in all your years of recruiting and coaching, all through it? What is the one position that scared you, and you were like, man, like Belichick has struggled with receivers. And is there ever a position you're like, I don't know. My, my radar is a little – because I, I know what you draft well. I watched it. But it, 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 are there positions, Jimmy, that even you would be like, I'm, I'm going to go ask Norv Turner or Wanstead on this? Yeah, I, 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 Colin, you know, I, I really struggled with the Dolphins a little bit. You know, I, I was able to get some great players with, you know, Jason Taylor, of course, a Hall of Famer. Zach Thomas is going to be a Hall of Famer. Patrick Sertan and – uh, Sam Madison, you know, corners that allowed us to lead the league in defense. But where I struggled was I was trying to get Dan Marino some help. And so it's kind of like your your bread and your milk deal. You know, I, I was, you know, reaching a little bit yeah. to get an offensive player you know, to help Dan Marino. And, uh, you know, we, we drafted Yatil Green. He tears up his knee, so we lost him. Uh, you know, so we drafted some players – we drafted Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was our running back. He rushed for over 1,000 yards, but he wasn't a difference maker. So when I start reaching a little bit to try to help a particular part of the football team, that's where I got in trouble. Yeah. Show that book again. It's called Swagger. You don't want to mess with Jimmy Johnson. Colin, there's some good stories in that book now. <laughs> now, you've told me several of them. Uh, which, which I know were in the book, and I didn't share because I didn't know if I had a right to, and they are in the book. So The closer we get to the release, <laughs> and you can share some of those stories. Jimmy, they can pre-order it on Simon & Schuster. No, it, it's, it's going to be great, Swagger. Great seeing you, Coach. All right, Colin. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.